Hello, You Can Heal family. We're back again reading through the book of Ephesians. We're in the Open Bible, the New Living Translation. And yesterday was such a fun time reading uh, the first three chapters live. But today I'm going to come to you um, through this video. So hopefully um, you're going to get a lot out of this reading and apply it to your life today. My name is Sheena Major. I'm a life coach and I help people heal from unhealthy relationships so they learn to do what? Love themselves, you got it. If you're new to this a channel and these Bible readings, I'm reading through the New Testament and sharing what's on my heart and what comes to my spirit as I go along. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy that and you'll get something out of it. So let's go. Ephesians chapter four. Oh, and yesterday we stopped off when uh, we were talking about how God's mighty power is at work in us and we um, can accomplish anything uh, more than we ever hope or dare to ask for. All right, here we go. Ephesians chapter 4, Exhortation to Unity. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God, be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and blind yourself together with peace. All right, I'm pausing because in this Bible, there's little sections that break out. And this one looks interesting, so I think I'm going to read it today. It says, The Person of the Holy Spirit, chapter 4, verse 3. So it's going to break uh, that down for us. One of the most serious errors in the minds of many people concerning the Holy Spirit is that he is simply a principle or an influence. On the contrary, the Holy Spirit is as much a person, individual existence of a conscious being as the Father and the Son. A, the personality of the Holy Spirit. The Bible speaks of the mind, Romans 8, 27, and will. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, of the Holy Spirit. He is often described as speaking directly to people in the book of Acts. During Paul's second missionary journey, the apostle was forbidden by the Spirit to visit a certain mission field, Acts 16, 6, and 7, and then was instructed to proceed toward another field of service, Acts 16, 10. It was God's Spirit who spoke directly to Christian leaders in the Antioch church, commanding them to send Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, Acts 13, 12. Letter B, the deity of the Holy Spirit. He is not only a real person, but he is also God. As is God the Father, he too is everywhere at once, Psalm 139, 7. As the Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit has also existed forever, Hebrews 9:14. He is often referred to as God in the Bible, see Acts 5, 3, and 4. Finally, the Holy Spirit is equal with the Father and Son. This is seen during the baptism of Christ, Matthew 3, 16, and 7, and is mentioned by Jesus himself just prior to his ascension from the Mount of Olives, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. And then it references that you can turn to page 1626 and read Titus 3, 5, the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation. All right, so now we're moving on. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. This section is means for unity, the gifts. And uh, my children are starting to wake up. So if you hear that in the background, I'm actually in the living room right now. And the sunlight is coming in. So my lighting's really good this morning. <laughs> And, oh, you guys, I got the um, my glasses. I picked them up yesterday with the bifocals so I can see <laughs> the words better. So that's good news, right? Praise God. All right, here we go. Verse 4. We are all one body. We have the same spirit, and we have all been called to the same glorious future. There is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and there is only one God and Father who is over us all and in us all and living through us all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift according to the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. 
Notice that it says he ascended. This means that Christ first came down to the lowly world in which we live. The same one who came down is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that his rule might fill the entire universe. What? Oh yeah, you use that one. Let me see how it looks. Purpose of the gifts. Verse 11. He is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ, until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full-grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or because someone has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like the truth. Instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly, and each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And this is so good because we talk about on this channel healthy relationships and how each of us, you know, has something to offer and something to give back to the world, to the church, to each other. And if we just tap into that and want to experience um, what God's put on the inside of us, you know, we'll be stronger, we'll grow together, and we'll be healthy. And, um, you know, like the word says right here, we'll be full of love, full of love. I like that. So hold on to the truth and love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ. And that should be our goal today, to be more like Christ right now in this moment than you were even five minutes ago, right? Right? You know, and even in our thinking, let's think like Christ today. Let's think like Christ today. Anytime you're having negative thoughts coming in your mind today, say, does that thought line up with the Word of God? Does that thought line up with the Word of God? If it doesn't, cast it down and open your mouth and speak God's Word <clears throat> and put the devil in his place. Amen? <clears throat> All right, let me get some water. The next section is, do not live as the ungodly, verse 17 in chapter 4. With the Lord's authority, let me say this, live no longer as the ungodly do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their closed minds are full of darkness. They are far away from the life of God because they have shut their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They don't care anymore about right and wrong, and they have given themselves over to immoral ways. Their lives are filled with all kinds of impurity and greed. Display a new nature, verse 20. But that isn't what you were taught when you learned about Christ. Since you have heard all about him and have learned the truth that is in Jesus, throw off your old evil nature and your former way of life, which is rotten through and through, full of lust and deception. Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. Okay, now that's real good. Throw off the old evil nature. Just, you know, literally, physically, take your hands and just start grabbing at your clothes like you're gonna rip them off and just start throwing them. Sometimes we have to get visual, right? We have to set up our own, our own word picture and just see yourself just throwing off the old man and just becoming the new person, the new nature. Verse 23, instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. And yes, our thoughts have to change. We have to think like Christ in order to grow and to, to prosper on our healing journey. You know, on this channel, we talk about healing from abuse or verbal, you know, spiritual, you name it, right? Emotional. And, and it starts in our thoughts. We are saved, and no one can pluck us out of God's hand, but we have to renew our mind daily. That's where the victory is. Verse 24. You must display a new nature because you are a new person, created in God's likeness, righteous, holy, and true. Praise God. So put away all falsehood and tell your neighbor the truth. 
because we belong to each other. And don't sin by letting anger gain control over you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. If you're angry today about something that's happened to you in your past or even currently, you have the right to be angry about it, but don't let that anger take over. Don't let it control you. You know, go to God with it, talk to him just like I'm talking to you and say, you know, Lord, this happened, that happened, and this is how I feel about it. You know, this is this is what I think about it. You know, this is what it's causing to come up for me in my life. You know, and I need your help. I need your help to, to get rid of this anger and he'll help you. He'll help you. It's the devil who wants to keep you in it. He wants to keep you in it. He does not want you healed, okay? So when you are feeling and having emotions that that aren't the Lord, because remember, Christ lives inside of you and he's not angry. And, and God needs a holy place to reside, right? So we need to work on, you know, really asking ourselves tough questions like, why am I angry? Why am I angry? What happened that's making me angry? And how, what do I need to do to work through it? You know, this is how you have to coach yourself. You, you really do. Verse 28 says, If you are a thief, stop stealing. Begin using your hands for honest work and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Okay, we just said that. God is holy and he lives in you. Remember, he is the one who has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Now, let's look at that. Let's just look at the words. Would you rather be bitter or kind? Would you rather be full of rage or be tender-hearted? Would you rather be angry or forgiving towards one another? Would you rather use harsh words, words of slander? You know, or would you rather just be like Christ? because he's forgiven you of all things. So we have a choice to make. We get to decide how we want to feel. We really do. If you want to go around feeling angry, you have every right to do that because God's not going to force himself on you. But um, there's a better option. There's a better option. And God will help you to um, press in so you can reach that, that way of life, you know, that it says here instead you know instead so let's live for the instead rather than what the enemy wants to get us caught in by blessing have a good day text me so I know what's going on love you all right so yeah my daughter just left for a volleyball campus the last day so they have like a little tournament so I'm gonna try to um, get up there today and take uh, one of my daycare babies so they can watch volleyball after I pick up Brent from ballet. All right, but anyways, um, as I was saying, yes, let's, let's instead, you know, let's be instead today. Instead of being bitter, we're gonna turn our thoughts toward Christ, Christ and let him help us work out whatever's causing that so we can replace that bitterness, you know, with, with tenderheartedness and kindness and forgiveness. Ah, oh, it's so good. All right, so now we're moving on to Ephesians chapter 5, and its section says, Live as children of light. Follow God's example in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love for others, following the example of Christ, who loved you and gave himself as a sacrifice to take away your sins. And God was pleased because that sacrifice was like sweet perfume to him. 
Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Now that, you know, if you are caught up in sexual immorality right now, okay, okay, I've been there. I get it. You know, and every day I, I remind myself I'm living for the Lord. I'm holy. I'm pure. So I'm going to, I'm going to every day, you know, say that to myself so I remain in this state. And if you're caught up in sexual thoughts or actions, just ask God to show you his will for you. You know, and be honest with him where you are. And, you know, once again, it's going back to make a decision. I'm going to decide to be living for the Lord and be pure today in my thoughts and in my um, actions. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is really an idolater who worships the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the terrible anger of God comes upon all those who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For though your hearts were full of darkness, now you are full of light from the Lord, and your behavior should show it. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. And that's a beautiful way to live. Let's live for what produces what is good, right, and true. Verse 10. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, rebuke and expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But when the light shines on them, it becomes clear how evil these things are. And where your light shines, it will expose their evil deeds. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I always think of the analogy, you know, how light and darkness can't dwell together. And I would tell my kids, you know, let's go in the bathroom and close the door and turn the light on. And I see you and you see me. Now turn the light off. We can't see each other. Now let's try to have the light on and off at the same time. You can't. It's impossible. We have to decide to let our light shine and move away from the darkness of this evil world. We have to pick a side. We really do. The next section says, Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So be careful how you live, not as fools, but as those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity for doing good in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Then you will sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. And you will always give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that just sounds so good. That just sounds so good. Um, all right, there's a section here called Walking in the Spirit, verses 518. So let's just read it. It says, To be filled with the Spirit is to be controlled by the Spirit, and therefore crucial to living the Christian life successfully. Unlike the indwelling of the Spirit, filling is a repeated experience. This is understood by the use of the present tense, let fill as well as by the biblical examples of Christians who were filled more than once, Acts 2, 4 and 4, 31. Just as important, we must observe that filling is a command to be obeyed, not an option. The next most important question is, how can someone be filled with the Spirit? The prerequisites are simply confession of sin and yielding to God. The former means to agree with God about the person's sin the latter means primarily dedication of self to God. The believer who chooses to obey in these areas is filled with the Spirit and enabled to manifest Christ-like character. This obedience may be accompanied by prayer, but is not necessarily so. The certainty of being filled with the Spirit 
may be confirmed by the believer's faith in life. The believer must, of course, believe God's word that meeting the conditions will result in the filling. The spirit-filled person will exhibit the Christ-like character described in Galatians 5, and 23 as the fruit of the spirit. Included in that list are all the vibrant, attractive qualities desired by all Christians. How delightful it is that any Christian may possess them and be transformed by the filling of the Spirit. And it says here, you can turn to page 22, that talks about the Christian's guide for facing problems in the new life. Uh, my daughter's packing her lunch for ballet, if you hear some noise in the background. The next section in Ephesians 5 says, Wives, submit to your husbands. And further, you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You wives will submit to your husbands as you do the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of his body, the church. He gave his life to be her savior. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives must submit to your husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. And you husbands must love your wives with the same love Christ showed the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by baptism and God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man is actually loving himself when he loves his wife. No one hates his own body, but lovingly cares for it, just as Christ cares for his body, which is the church, and we are his body. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Now just a few words on this section. Me being married and now divorced, I had to study these scriptures when I made my decision to leave my marriage. So I'm gonna just ask you or say to you, if you're in a situation where you're married and you know that things are going on that um, God will never do to you or say to you, you really need to examine these scriptures. Um, if you're in, um, turmoil right now if you're not sure what to do which way to go I've lived <laughs> I've lived it I know what it's like to be a Christian woman and to make a decision to leave your marriage so go ahead to sheenamajor.com backslash call if you're led to wanting to process what's going on in your life right now and I'll listen and I, I truly understand I truly truly do so I just wanted to say that to you. And I have some vid videos, a couple videos on, on you know, the channel regarding um, divorce. So you can check that out. All right, moving on. We're on uh, chapter 6, Ephesians. And the first section is children, obey your parents. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of the Ten Commandments that ends with a promise. And this is the promise. If you honor your father and mother, you will live a long life full of blessing. And now a word to your fathers. Don't make your children angry by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. And I've learned through parenting that really... <laughs> we have to get disciplined first and then we can discipline our kids you know i just think about like um i don't know the first example is my daughter bren she is a night owl she is a night owl so i had to discipline myself in order to get her to get a bedtime routine and it's still a work in progress but i think it starts with us first you know deciding that we're going to discipline our children or we're going to instruct them we're going to teach them the right way and then they're they're able to follow our example better you know instead of us just one day you know disciplining them and then one day letting them do whatever they want and 
getting away with things because then there's no consistency there and then they don't take us seriously so those are just my thoughts on that um, the next section says service on the job slaves obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ work hard but not just to please your masters when they are watching as slaves of Christ do the will of God with all your heart work with enthusiasm as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do whether we are slaves or free and in the same way you masters must treat your slaves right don't threaten them remember you both have the same master in heaven and he has no favorites so you know in today's age there you know there aren't like slaves but he's saying if you work on a job and you have an employer you know just do your very best for them and in return hopefully your employer is treating you the same way but in anything we do we're not doing it for man or people or your boss you're really doing it for God you know you're really living for him and and living for him um, you know you're gonna end up pleasing the person you work for I guess or you know anybody you serve and and those of us who are in you know on what am I trying to say have chant my daughter is tickling my neck why are you tickling my neck <laughs> if um if we're giving our best for the Lord then we're gonna be giving our best to people let's just leave it there the next section is put on the armor of God would you like to read it Brad? Mm. verse 10 okay a final word be, be strong with the Lord's mighty power Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against strategies and tricks of the devil. For we are not fighting against people who people made of flesh and blood, and against the evil rules, um, the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world and against wicked spirits in the heaven in the he oh my god in the heavenly realms very good thank you all right Brent just read verses 10 through 12 for us now we're on verse 13 use every piece of god's armor to resist the enemy in time of evil so that after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. And there was a time in my life when I would get dressed, you know, with my clothes, but then I would dress myself with this armor, like literally pretend I'm putting on the helmet, pretend I'm putting on the belt of truth, pretend I'm putting on, you know, peace on my feet. You know, holding up that shield of faith, literally, like there's a shield in my hand. These are the things we must do because the enemy is lurking around, you know, trying to take you out. So put on your armor today. Put on your armor today. Whatever you're doing, if you can stop right now and put it on, do that. If, you know, you need to, <clears throat> you know, wait until you're in a situation where you can, um, then make sure that you're putting on your armor at some point today. The next section says pray for boldness, verse 19. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words as I boldly explain God's secret plan that the good news is for the Gentiles too. I am in chains now for preaching this message as God's ambassador. ambassador. But pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. 
you know that's so good that's so good we need to lift up one another and pray and encourage one another to keep going and to do what called what paul's what paul <laughs> what god has called us to do and that's what paul's saying you know he's in chains right now but he's still speaking the truth uh, boldly the conclusion of this chapter says to Kias, a much-loved brother and faithful helper in the Lord's work. We will tell you all about how I'm getting along. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am sending him to you for just this purpose. He will let you know how we are, and he will encourage you. May God give you peace, dear brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God's grace be upon all who love our Lord Jesus, with an undying love. And that's my prayer for you today. May anyone listening to the sound of my voice right now, may God's grace be upon you and may the love of the Lord be with you, his undying love. So that's it, you guys. We did it. We finished Ephesians. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> we finished Ephesians. <coughs> Excuse me. We finished Ephesians, so give yourself a round of applause. You did it. You're hanging with me, and I'm so thankful that you're wanting to get this good word and following along. So tomorrow, yes, we are. We are going to continue in the book of Philippians, and yes, we're going to start with the introduction, you guys, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to read it, and this time I'm going to remember to upload it because remember when I started Ephesians, I never uploaded it, and I had to read it again. And I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to, with God's help, remember. So I'm praying that you have a great day today or a good night's sleep or a good afternoon, whatever time you're hearing this good word. And what do I always say? True healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Bye. Have a good day. Ha, ha, ha.